for reasons uh, unknown to me actually, uh, Tesla has decided that uh, some people or some cars will temporarily have the full self-drive, full self-driving capability. Um, lots of people in the Netherlands have it at least. Uh, from what I understood, it's mostly people who own the cars themselves and do not lease it because leasers won't have the option to buy the full self-driving capability anyway afterwards. So now in the Netherlands, many of us have a trial period where we can try this full self-driving capability for um, two weeks and then the car will be back to normal again, which reminds me of this. I'd go for a walk, I'd look at things, I'd talk to people. I would decide if I want to go in this direction or that direction or straight ahead. I would do all the things that you people take for granted. And that's it? That's it. That's from the movie uh, Awakenings. Some people may know it from 1990. Robin Williams plays a doctor who uh, works in a, in, a, in a psychiatric institution where people are mostly living like plants. They cannot talk. They don't interact with other people at all. But he finds this experimental medicine where people suddenly are back to normal again, like you see Robert De Niro here. He, he was in this cataconic state for like 20 years and then suddenly with his medication, he was a normal person again. But the problem was after a while, they got used to the medication and then they would all go back to normal again, which is I'm afraid also going to happen with my car because I have this full self driving for two weeks and then it's going to be a dumb car again. Anyway, I did want to look at uh, how this full self driving works and also show you because I couldn't really find any practical information on the internet when I tried to do it. Of course, there's the manual, but uh, that's quite theoretical and I wanted to see what it can do in practice and what are the quirks and features, you know, as some people call it, of this full self driving. So what do you do? First of all, you have to uh, enable it. Um, that's in the autopilot menu. So there are actually a number of things that it can do with full self driving. It, you can use the summon feature, you know, where you can get the car to go to, towards you or from you even when you're outside of the car. It's not really useful at all in the Netherlands. Then there's the auto park function, also not really useful because it's very slow and it parks far away from the curb. And there's the navigation, the, the full self driving with navigate on autopilot. Navigate on autopilot basically says, okay, uh, you enter in a destination and on the highways, the car will basically uh, steer itself and even change lanes and stuff like that. Um, which means that if I enter a destination, it will give me the option to use navigate on autopilot, which is enabled by default now. And that means on the highway, it will stay in the lane but it will suggest lane st changes for you and you can also uh, how do you say this you can you can uh, cannot find the word <laughs> you can start basically a lane change yourself by using uh, the indicator okay so let's see how this thing works so now autopilot is enabled and it suggests I make a lane change and in order for that to happen I have to press the indicator and very slightly move the steering wheel. Now I will do it again. And you see it displays a red line when it thinks it's not safe to uh, change the lane. But it's pretty tricky to get this right because um, so you, you have to press the indicator only you know where it goes with three uh, blinks and then stops again so a light touch. But you have to move the steering wheel very slightly, otherwise it will not do anything. Okay, now it refuses to go to the left because the car was behind us. And you see it says auto lane change timer elapsed. That means, okay, it wants to initiate a lane change, but when it doesn't happen quickly enough, it cancels it again. So now it wants to change. I indicate, I move the steering wheel slightly and then the rest is what the car does. I will increase the speed a bit. So these are lane changes that the car uh, chooses to do itself, let's say. I can also enforce a lane change. 
and then I have to use the indicator as well but I don't touch it lightly I go all the way so it keeps on blinking and when I do that it will uh, it will also change lanes once I move the steering wheel a bit so now it wants to go to a slower lane I don't know why confirm lane change out of passing lane sometimes it wants to stay in the left lane a lot and sometimes it wants to go to the right lane and I have no idea why in this situation I, I don't think it makes any sense of course in the end we will have to move because we have to exit here in 900 meters okay so I'll confirm now it's, go, it, it's braking a bit now because with this car oops now it's braking very much I don't know why and again I have to confirm the lane change and the rest it does by itself now it wants to change again so I'll do that oh now it decided it doesn't want to change anymore So let's say I do want to go to the right lane, then I'll just turn on the indicator, slightly touch the steering wheel, and then it will do the rest by itself. And it will also switch off the indicator again. Now it wants to go to the left lane again, so I confirm by blinking and touching the steering wheel, and the rest it does itself. I don't touch the wheel at all. Okay, now I have to... So here we have to exit, it says already confirm lane change, but there's a car next to us, so what are we going to do? We have to brake, or slow down. So I'm going to blink, I cannot go, now I can. Oh, I, I don't think I touched the wheel at all, it just went to the left. Another thing is, interesting, not, not right now here, but if you're in a tunnel, it, uh, it stops the uh, full self the navigation on autopilot, so then it goes back to the normal autopilot. We are going actually in a tunnel now, but I think it's, gone, it's not going to be a highway anymore, so probably uh, we won't see that. So I'm going to go to the right now because that's what it wants. Even though I move the steering wheel to the left, doesn't really matter as long as I move the steering wheel slightly it will change the lane now I'll, I'll force the lane change to the right so indicating as you can see it says in 200 meters 100 meters autopilot is not available anymore navigate on autopilot and now we're back to the normal autopilot because we're not on the highway anymore so I have to move to the left but I cannot because there's a car behind me. Now I can, so I'm indicating, I'm slightly touching the wheel, and there we go. And I have to go one more. I cannot because there's a red line, I indicate, but that's not gonna help. Okay, now I can, I hope. Yes, no. There's a student behind me, a car student, a driving student, how do you call that? So, okay we managed some uh, construction work going on here I hope he will see the lanes correctly so far so good and we have a tunnel up ahead This works fine. Okay, so watch the display now. The, the tunnel is up ahead of us. We're still on navigator autopilot, which is seen by the blue line, the single line in the middle. Navigate on autopilot, unavailable in 100 meters unsupported tunnel 
okay? I don't know why. You see now it goes to uh, normal autopilot. And we will see it switch back again at the end of the tunnel. So see you at the end of the tunnel. You see, now it moves back to the navigator autopilot because we exited the tunnel. I suppose it's because of GPS uh, data that it needs. Now it wants to move to the left, so I indicate, touch the wheel, and there we go. So, summary. Basically, the, what, what the navigator autopilot does for you is uh, changing lanes. Uh, which is an advantage because with normal autopilot every time you change a lane you switch off the autopilot automatically and you have to engage it again which is beep 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 and in this case uh, you can change lanes like now he wants to go to the left and keep autopilot running that's basically the main advantage and the difference in changing lanes is either uh, autopilot suggests it for you asking you to confirm that you want to change lanes or you do it yourself if you really want to and he doesn't want to then you you know uh, start the indicator and then it will uh, change lanes if it's safe of course so now i think it's going to probably stay in the left for oh no it doesn't want to go to the right okay which is better because there's plenty of space there so let's look at the last feature of uh, full self-driving that we haven't checked yet and is not really worth checking which is the auto park feature so I am parked now next to a parking spot behind me you can see it here on the on the screen so I'll say start and it will squeakingly put itself into the parking spot in a way that I would never do it myself let's give you some steering wheel view as well Ooh, these noises it turns you know without moving the car so the, the the tires are on the road and going over the street I would never do that I would normally always turn the wheel while I'm driving slowly but it's a nice and silent procedure I think it's gonna go Oh, no, a complete. Oh, that was a disaster. <laughs> okay, let's try one more, a parallel one. Let's try this. Yep. Although I don't know where it's going to park now. Oh yeah, behind me. That's the one I wanted. Oh, that hurts. Okay. Ah, that was pretty okay.